Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you've had a good week, and we look forward to Shabbos and uh, Purim just around the corner. This week's Erev Shabbos video of our Torah is sponsored, dedicated for the Rafua Shlema of Guta Pesach Basrisa Elka by her family. And we join her family in davening that she should have a speedy and full recovery and healing. And we thank her family for the sponsorship. Thank you very much. Today is the 168th day since the attack on October 7th. We continue to daven for the hostages and their families, for the soldiers and their families, uh, and for all of Israel. And of course, one question that uh, everyone is asking is, how are we supposed to uh, observe, celebrate? Purim Purim is meant to be a day of unbridled joy and celebration, rejoicing, merriment. Uh, And yet, how can we do that when Israel is in a state of war and when so many individuals um, uh, are suffering, are suffering now? And yet, uh, there's a sense that uh, we should um can't cancel the day and there still is a mitzvah to be happy on Purim. I encourage people to read the attached piece in this email by Rabbanit Esti Rosenberg, uh, who uh from a poetic perspective um uh, uh tries to approach uh this issue. But the thought occurred to me that although uh we must still celebrate and rejoice on Purim, uh the events of this year obviously uh, will affect and should change and make it a Purim that is different than other years. And how should it be different? It still will be a Purim of Simcha. But perhaps this year, one way to approach it is that uh, although there is a mitzvah to rejoice and to be happy ourselves this year, we should focus on the aspect of making others happy. It is a day of Simcha, but it is a day that we realize that there are other people in the world that are not for Simcha. And so today is a day that we'll try to help as many people increase the simcha in their lives. There are four mitzvot on the day of Purim, to hear the Megillah, uh, to have a festive meal, a suda, mishloch manos, to send gifts to friends and others in the community, and of course, matanos lavyonim, gifts to the poor. Uh, the Rambam writes, famously, mutav adam laharbos, b'matanos avyonim, melharbos v'sudaso, mishloch manos l'rev. A person should contribute more to Matanos of Yonim, more than they are spending on their meal to them, to enjoy themselves, or more than they are spending on the Matanos of Yonim that they send to friends. She'ein sham simcha gedola mfuara, el elisameach leiv aniyim v'yesomim v'amanos v'gerim, because there is no joy that is as great, that is as beautiful as the joy that is associated with making the poor, widows, orphans, or the strangers happy. Someone who makes such people happy. They are similar to the Divine Presence. Shnemar the Pasuk says, That although God resides in the highest and most holy of worlds, He is with the lowly of spirit and brokenhearted and gives them life. And to give life to such people, uh, we are walking in the footsteps uh, of the Divine. Where did the Ram get this to? It's actually quite an important statement. It's a halachic statement, although he does not say one is absolutely obligated to, but he's saying that the best way to perform the mitzvah, ideally, uh, as a general rule for most people, uh, we should um, uh, spend more funds on Matanas of Yonim than our own Suda or the Mishloch Manos. Where did the Ram get this from? Everything the Rambam writes comes from a Gemara, comes from a Medrash, comes from some earlier statement of Chazal. It is a codification of uh, the rabbinic sources. Where does this come from if we turn to uh, the classic commentary, the Magi Mishnah, the side of the Rambam, who always provides the source for the Rambam, writes, Divri Rabbeinu, the words of our master in this case, that is preferable to give Matanos of Yonim over the other mitzvos, Ru'uyin Elav, are fitting for him. That literally means what it, but mean, what that means to say is, there is no source. There is no source. The Rambam uh, understood this to be self-evident. Uh, the Ram, who we think uh, is the model of incredible intellectual capability and achievement of Talmud Torah, of learning Torah, and of general wisdom, that's absolutely true. And yet the Rambam also understood that the most important thing is to help others, especially those uh, who are vulnerable, who are a little bit alone, uh, who do not have the same support system uh, that we do. There is no source for this. There are so few halachos that the Ram writes in the Mishnah Torah that are not based on some early primary source. For the Ram to include something without an explicit primary source, the Rambam would have told you that's because it is so self-evident. We see from this Rambam, not just what the Rambam says, but from the fact that he can say it uh, on his own, 
uh, shows how obvious it was to him, and uh, that should make an impression on us. It is interesting that uh, the Megillah begins with such an example that the Ram here describes. Uh, the very beginning of the Megillah, uh, it records that there was this great prominent person named Mordechai Bashushan Abira who lived in the capital city of the Persian Empire. He was a member of the royal court. He was a leader of the Jewish people. And he had some family member, a niece, a cousin, maybe even more distant. Her name was Esther, and she was an orphan. She was an orphan. Presumably there were other members of the family who could have taken care of her. Uh, Mordechai was a very busy person, prominent person. And although he dealt with such important issues and ideas, uh, he would take care of this orphan. And because he did, she grew up to be Esther. He obviously raised her so that she would be confident and strong and righteous. Because of that, she was able uh, to save the Jewish people. So the story of Purim, the miracle of Purim, the redemption and salvation of Purim, uh, is based on an act of chesed, of caring for an orphan. And the seeds of that act of chesed grew uh, into the salvation and redemption of the Jewish people. Uh, the Rambam tells us where we should spend our money, uh, but it's also true where to spend uh, our emotional energy. The passage that he quotes is La'achayos ruch shvelim, la'achayos lev nidkaim, to breathe life into those people who are uh, of low spirit or of broken heart. Uh, there may be people who uh, you can't give matanos slavionim to them because financially uh, they are secure, they are even wealthy. But there may be some other reason uh, that they're a little down. Take this opportunity of Purim uh, to cheer them up. Take the opportunity of Purim to sort of reach beyond our normal circle. Maybe there's someone who you want to make amends with. Show up their house with a Mishloch Manot. It's such a wonderful opportunity. Someone who you want to get closer to, someone who you feel maybe doesn't feel as included in the community. Go over to their house, knock on the door, bring them a Mishloch Manot. Be someone who, like the Divine Presence, is uh, La Chayot. Who breathes life uh, into people uh, who need it. We all sometimes need a little boost. Think about who needs a boost. Not just in Matas of Yonah, but in Mishloch Manot as well. Purim should be a day of Simcha, even this year. Perhaps especially this year should be a day of Simcha, but not a day that we focus on our own Simcha, a day when we try uh, to increase the Simcha in the lives of others. Everyone should have a good Shabbos. And a Shabbat Shalom.